So, painting a weapon or a blade so that it is visibly recognisable as coated in a poison of some kind can be quite tricky because it's such a small scale. Especially if you don't want to go with just painting a green line down the blade edge. However, if you can get this right, it can look awesome. Especially if you are painting for a competition and you want to try and tell that story. Or, or are you a beast on the tabletop and you just want to see your opponent squirm as they recognise that the blades coming storming towards their finest troops are coated in all sorts of horrible nastiness. <coughs> anyway, I've got three very different options for you today. Very different approaches, very different styles, using different bits of kit. So once I've finished running you through it, I'll then put them all together at the end and then drop it down in the comments which is your favourite and why. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so for this example, I pulled three orc blades out of my bits box. Now, the very basics for this, they're all primed black, and then I painted them in the brightest silver I have. Now, this was a Vallejo Metallics Aluminium. The very light silver allows a lot more of the, the colour to show, despite all the washes and things we'll do in a bit. So for this first big chopper, I'm gonna kind of do standard painting on of the effect. So for this one, I wanna make it like a big, rusty blade covered in green goop. So first of all, I wanna make a wash out of a Vallejo model color chocolate brown and go over the whole blade to kind of to dull down some of that silver, but also to add a bit more definition into the detail. So the next bit, I'm gonna get some foam. This is like some packing foam to scrunch it up a little bit and then use that once again, that dark chocolate brown to stipple on and to create the, the first dark layer of the old rust. Now the next phase, I'm gonna get the light rust orangey brown from the Vallejo Panzer Races range and do exactly the same process again to create the lighter, newer rust. Okay, so the first of the poisony bits, I'm gonna use the Vallejo Model Air Gunship Green. Once again, same thing, using the sponge and just dabbing off most of the paint so you're not sponging on great big gloopy parts of it. I'm then gonna sponge that on over the bulk of the cutting blade. So I want to build that green up and make it brighter. This one's from Eye Painter Moldy Clothes. You could use any bright green you wanted. And then repeat the process by sponging on, but being careful not to completely obliterate that darker green underneath. Now that bright green really does make it stand out a lot more, but I want to add a bit more colour in there. So I'm going to add some, do a little bit of yellow, just to make it a bit more gross. Now the minute it still looks like green paint, and I want to make it look a bit wetter. So I'm going to do multiple coats of gloss varnish over the green, and to make it that kind of wet look. Now the more coats of gloss varnish you put on, the wetter it's gonna look, the glossier it's gonna look. So the next option, I'm gonna play with some oils. One of the benefits of using oil paints or enamel based paints is that, is that they can look quite oily. So I'm gonna try and take advantage of that. So I'm gonna use the enamel engine oil from the AK Interactive range. Then almost use it as a wash to Go over the entire blade to make the whole blade look a bit oily and take down that brand new shiny silver colour. Now for exactly the same principle as using water to dilute and move around your acrylic paint, you can use enamel thinners to do the same thing with oils. So if you put a bit too much on, don't worry about it, use a little bit of enamel thinners and then you can then kind of dilute the oil paint and then push it around to exactly where you want it to be. So this one I'm going to use a a mix of oils and enamels. Now, because they're both oil-based, they will mix quite nicely. So in this example, I'm, I'm gonna use some olive green from Windsor & Newton, which is an oil paint. And then I'm also gonna use some yellow from the Humbrol enamel paint range. So I'm mixing these two colors on the palette. Not completely, to, I want them to be slightly separate still, but also I'm gonna use the, the, the olive green, put it in neat and put it th slightly thicker around the cutting edge of the blade, but also towards the bottom of the blade where it's poisonous kind of flowed and gathered into a bit of a pool. To finish it off, I can put go over again with a little bit more of that engine oil to give it that more of that oily, poisonous, coatingy goopiness. Right, option three is super easy and really, really quick. So first of all, I'm gonna use the Vallejo Streaking Grime, once again to give it that kind of wash and to take down that new shininess of the silver. Also, straight away, it makes the whole blade look slightly grimy and, and grotty. Now, you may have seen in a recent video that we tested out the AK Interactive Swamp Green Water Gel. So I'm gonna put this stuff onto the blade neat, just along what would be the cutting edge, and then dragging it back slightly to in little streaks, but leaving pools of it around the recesses of this particular blade. Super quick, super easy. Now, remember with the Swamp Water Gel, 
you need to let it dry overnight to let it cure. Once it's dry, that's all there is to it. Now all three blades have completely different looks to them, so it really depends on the story that you're trying to tell if you're trying to paint for a competition, for example. If you're speed painting a massive army, for example, then the painted one definitely took the longest, and the swamp goo was definitely the quickest. You could do a whole army of those very, very quickly. So all three of them come out very, very differently, very, very different effects, and it kind of depends on the look you're going for. But that's now three different ideas in your toolbox. So if you like that, found that useful, please bash that like button and share it across your social media. And I'll see you for the next project.